Welcome to Witham Sounding Board, a podcast sharing powerful business tips, insights, and trends for those seeking to become a rock star in their industry. Good day, and welcome to Witham's Lodging Insights and Innovations podcast. My name is Lena Combs. I'm a partner here at Witham and the practice leader of the firm's hospitality services team. Today, I have with me Jeanette Jordan, who is a partner in Witham's Transaction Advisory Services Group. Today, we'll be talking about transaction advisory, deal analysis, and M&A for the hospitality and lodging industry. Thank you, Jeanette, for joining us today and talking about this timely topic and providing your insights to the lodging industry. It's my pleasure to be here. Sorry. (laughs) Great. Well, let's get started. So, Jeanette, Tell me what transaction advisory services are comprised of and when a company would need to engage a professional who specializes in these types of services. Sure. So transaction advisory professionals are going to be there to help with any portion of the deal cycle. So, you know, in some situations, the advisors are supporting the sellers. Sometimes we're advising the buyers. Um, sometimes we're mediating in between. Uh, but, you know, from a sell side perspective, you know, we're involved with anything from sale readiness to value creation, you know, taking a look at the value drivers within the business, identifying opportunities to maybe maximize profits, you know, put some uh, growth goals in place really professionalize the business from an operational and financial perspective. Um, And then um, on behalf of a buyer, of course, we are often brought in to just look at the historical information that a seller is providing to try to support the valuation that's been proposed, identify any potential risks that they might um, encounter and be taking on as they take on that business and also just really helping them identify and put together a plan for future integration as well. So really any part of the deal cycle, you can find some value in, in professionals that have you know a long history in working with companies and, and really working that process in a way that benefits um, buyers and sellers. Great. Yeah. It seems to me, you mentioned the um, value creation. Is that what mm-hmm. you said? That seems that that would be something um, that sellers would definitely be interested in, right? That it would be an important to maximize the value for the business that they're trying to um, trying to you know, put forth in a transaction. So, right, and I that's like what that we term, really value creation. That's what we really encourage to you know some some forethought and some planning. Uh, you know, we had a really frothy deal market in the last couple of years. A lot of people decided to sell their businesses who hadn't necessarily been thinking about it, either from COVID fatigue or just from just really wanting to take advantage of some really high multiples that were in the market. But if you're going to try to create value, try to do some real readiness, you know, you, you want a little bit more runway if at all possible. 18 to 24 months is really ideal to to spend some time really looking at what levers you can pull and and what you can do to really position yourself well. Oh, that's great intel. Thank you. So in some of the deals that you have have worked on, have there been any major issues that you've experienced that would sort of be helpful to our listeners as a cautionary tale for their own situation, things to maybe avoid, things to be considering in advance, that type of thing? Sure. And in today's deal market, which is very different than maybe a year ago, I think we're seeing a lot more emphasis on the quality of reporting, the quality of the business, the strength of the projections, much more so than maybe the last couple of years when when people were just desperate to deploy their capital and and get some deals done and, and keep moving forward. So I would say you really have to spend some time looking at your historical revenues and expenses. Um, there's going to be scrutiny on those as you go through a diligence process. Um, so anything like sloppy record keeping or inadequate documentation or, or questions that can't be answered without significant research, those are all things in today's market that are just going to really slow down the deal, potentially erode you know, trust and, and value in the transaction. Um, so in this current market, you really just have to come prepared. Um, and then I would say like specific to, 
lodging. We we did a deal recently with a resort, a 295-room resort. Um, the buyer had some specific concerns going into the transaction. We were engaged by the buyer to look at some of these specific concerns. Um, the, the resort had the hotel, restaurant, spa, golf course. Um, the golf course had hosted a major event that was not something that was going to be reoccurring every year. They wanted us to really take a look at that and consider, you know, what that meant versus what a normal run rate might look for the golf course. Um, the hotel had changed management companies. So there was some inconsistency in reporting across the transition that was really a concern um, that they wanted to make sure everything had been captured and properly um, presented as, as to what it cost to run run that business. Um, and then finally, they were even considering a change of use on part of the facility. So they were working on trying to put together some projections and make sure that they understood what the economic impact of that change would be. So a lot of specific things that we can get into in supporting management as they try to make decisions on not only how to value a deal, whether or not to close the deal, but also how you know to look at that business going forward. So, right, and identify yeah. those unusual transactions to kind of carve them out and be able to address them separately, I think is probably important. That's right. And nothing's, nothing is the same. Every deal is different. <laughs> They're all unique, right? <laughs> exactly. So what are some key items you analyze when working on a deal in the hospitality sector? Yeah. So, of course, it's going to depend what type of company within the sector. Um, always we start with looking at monthly historical operating results. EBITDA is a big metric in um, transaction advisory. That's earnings before interest taxes, depreciation and amortization. And, you know, the purpose there is to take out some of the variables because your cost of capital is different than my cost of capital. You know, you might I might lease everything, you might buy everything. So we're just trying to kind of look at um, what a business looks like before you layer on some of those other um, more elective structures in, in the cost of the business. So we look at EBITDA um, and then, you know, for hotels, the same things management is hopefully monitoring on a regular basis, right? Um, average daily rate revenue per available room, occupancy and average length of stay, you know, all of those things that are going to help us compare that hotel to its immediate competitors and, and maybe a broader portfolio of a buyer um, so that they have an understanding of where they might be able to make improvements and improve the profitability, uh, you know, under their own operating model. Um, if we're looking at a restaurant, which I know sometimes Maybe that's hospitality, maybe it's not, but you know, in my mind, they're usually wrapped together in, in, in many cases, like in the uh, case of the resort that we were in. And there were, you know, again, certain data points that really help us understand the operation of the business. Revenue per available seat or table, occupancy data, such as canceled reservations, um, guest per table, guest count, product mix. Um, sometimes it's really interesting to see um, the profit margins in the bar versus the food. <laughs> um, so, you know, all of those things. And then also, of course, a real focus on, you know, just the waste within in the, uh, in the industry and, and whether or not they're capturing that, reporting that, and, and really managing that well. Great. So what are some key issues arising from COVID? And, and in that regard, I mean, you know, what do you analyze or try to normalize when working with companies in a sector so heav heavily impacted by the pandemic? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I guess I can be Captain Obvious here and say there's obviously a very immediate impact to hospitality where nobody went anywhere and, and um, you know, occupancy was just really low and, and, and you know, that, that, that's a little bit in the rearview mirror now, that immediate and dramatic impact. Um, currently, things that are still impacting businesses, especially in this industry, obviously labor, cost of labor and just availability of labor is a huge issue um, in the business, you know, in this current market. Um, and then, you know, business travel just really has not 
fully recovered to previous levels. We're just not seeing those same levels of, of travel for business. Um, so that's, you know, from an operational and just economic standpoint. And then when we look at it from a quality of earnings or normalization perspective, you know, it very much depends. Like we, in theory, we would like to try to normalize revenue for what it should look like versus how it was impacted by these temporary conditions of COVID. Um, unfortunately, they weren't as temporary as anybody hoped they would be. And it's a very difficult metric to adjust because nobody can really definitive, definitively say what new normal is or what past normal should have been over the last couple of years. Um, so you're probably not going to see normalization adjustments around revenue because buyers just aren't going to give credit for what should have been when nobody can really say, you know, what should be or, or what the future looks like. Uh, now you might see adjustments around labor costs. Um, and unfortunately those are negative adjustments because the cost of labor has gone up significantly and it could be impacting margins if you weren't able to, you know, adjust pricing accordingly. Uh, those are the kind of things that we are looking at. And then of course now, more than ever, there's a real focus within these businesses to manage costs where maybe there was less focus in the past because money was free, we could borrow, we could, <laughs> you know, it was it was just much easier to get capital and, and uh, less important to really manage costs. So as they're putting into place these new cost management structures, there might be opportunities to normalize earnings um, to reflect the benefit of those costs. Right. So every market is different. Back to your previous point, it's one size fits one, right? Right. Each exactly. deal has its own uh, set of circumstances and considerations that are going to be different. So. Sure. Exactly. So Jeanette, what is one key piece of advice you would give to an owner that's considering divesting? I mean, I, I'm sure this is a broken record type of comment to make, but you know, think about it in advance. Give yourself a runway to, to get yourself there. Going through a sale process is, is time consuming. It's stressful. It's, you know, gonna take a lot out of you. You need to have the energy and bandwidth to manage those sale process and continue to manage the business because the lot, you know, the last thing you want to do is take your eye off the business and let it suffer. As you're trying to, you know, come to clo to a closing and, and substantiate the value that you're being paid for. So give yourself a runway, work with a professional that can help you identify some of the most important factors when they come into, you know, when a buyer comes in to look at your business. We strongly recommend professionalizing the operation. Um, you know, many s smaller middle market companies might have a heavy reliance on the owner. And if they're looking to exit, that's really not attractive to most buyers because if the business is heavily reliant on that person and that person is exiting, it's going to be difficult to transition. If you have a management team in place that can, that is really taking care of the operations, the customers, the employees, um, you know, that transition is going to look a lot easier. Reporting systems are also important, you know, have good data to support your metrics and support your valuation. Um, and just, you know, again, think about why you're exiting and what your plan is for the future. Because oddly enough, a lot of deals that don't come to closing are because the seller realizes they don't have a vision for their future and they can't let go of their past. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, as you, Again, giving yourself that runway, making your own plans for the future. Um, you know, everybody says they're going to go hang out on their boat, but, you know, that's a week or a month and then what? So, <laughs> right. Good point. Good point. And on the, the other side of that, what is one key piece of advice you'd give, you'd give a buyer when looking to acquire? Yeah, I think you need to think about what your strengths are as a buyer or as, you know, somebody who's going to step in and operate a business. You want to understand the goals and objectives of your potential target because um, the seller might be looking just, they, all they want is the cash and the cash is king and that's all that matters. Or 
Um, are they more concerned about the legacy of their business, the security of the employees that they've built, you know, that they've put in place? Um, so you have to understand how you match to your potential buyer. And then in today's market, you have to know your source of capital. Um, you know, it's difficult right now to get approved through, you know, lenders. If you're able to come to the table and show where your source of funds are coming from and that you will be able to close the transaction, you're certainly going to be ahead of maybe some other players in the market right now. Right. And with interest rates being so high, uh, right. <laughs> people aren't offering, you know, discounts on the purchase price to cover the, you know, the cost of that, the increased cost of that capital. So definitely some considerations. Yeah. Well, sure. I really it, appreciate your insight and your time today. Um, I think it was a good, a good primer for any of our listeners who are going through the M&A process, regardless of which side of the, the, the paper they're on, so to speak. So um, thank you for, thank you for being with us and providing your insight. I appreciate the invite. Thank you. If you have any questions about today's podcast, please reach out to us through www.withem.com forward slash hospitality.